Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we will discuss about colon cancer, the third most common cancer in the world. Remember Chadwick Boseman, the incredible actor who played Black Panther? In the year 2020, the world was shocked by his sudden death. He was young and fit, but he had been battling colon cancer for four years. He was just 39 years old when he was diagnosed. Yes, very young. And this is not an uncommon thing these days. Colon cancer is not just affecting the older adults anymore. Many young people are getting it, which is why we all need to pay attention. So today, let us have an honest discussion about what causes colon cancer, how can you reduce your risk, what are the symptoms that you should not ignore, and what to do if you or someone you love is diagnosed with colon cancer. Let's get started. Think of your large intestine as a long pipe with six main sections, the cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, and the rectum. Cancer developing in any of these areas is called a colorectal cancer. Every day in our colon, the old cells die and new cells are born. It's like our body's own renovation project that happens daily. But sometimes due to certain factors which we will discuss later in this video, the system gets out of control and the cells start growing rapidly and form some small growths called polyps. Think of polyps as the warning lights on your car's dashboard. They don't mean an emergency yet, but they definitely need attention. These polyps can hang around in your colon for 10 to 15 years without causing any trouble. Some of them may gradually transform into cancer. And the good news is that there is a big window of opportunity to find these polyps and remove them before they become dangerous. In the coming section, we will discuss why these cells get out of control and how to diagnose the polyps early. So what makes these colon cells go out of control? There are several risk factors that can increase your chances of developing colorectal cancer. The first and foremost is an unhealthy diet. What we eat eventually reaches the colon and the bad things in our diet can have a serious effect on the cells there. Avoid processed food. The food items commonly linked to colon cancer are highly processed meat like sausage, bacon and hot dogs. Avoid high calorie sugary drinks like colas and also avoid fast food high in fat. A diet rich in fiber and whole grains is protective. Make sure you eat a lot of vegetables and fruits. Maintain a healthy body weight. Being overweight can increase your risk of developing colorectal cancer. Doing regular exercise and physical activity will protect you. Like we have discussed previously in our channel, smoking and alcohol consumption can cause DNA damage which can increase your risk even for colorectal cancer. If any of your immediate family member like your parent or your sibling had colorectal cancer, then you are at a higher risk and you should be more careful with your diet and your lifestyle. Every healthy choice that you make reduces your risk of developing colorectal cancer immediately. Now you may be thinking, okay, I don't really have a healthy lifestyle. How do I know if the damage has already been done? That is where screening tests come into the picture. Screening tests are meant to pick up cancer at an early stage before the symptoms develop. The main screening test for colon cancer is called a colonoscopy where the doctor can see the inside of your colon using a thin tube with a camera. It is generally done under sedation and it is not as uncomfortable as you think. If the doctor finds anything suspicious on your colonoscopy, say a polyp, he can either remove it or get a biopsy done. A colonoscopy is ideally started at 45 to 50 years of age and repeated every 10 years. If someone in your family had colon cancer, you may need to start it earlier, so discuss this with your doctor. If you are uncomfortable to go for a colonoscopy, there are some stool tests. They are not as good, but they are better than no screening at all. And if you are interested in knowing about other cancer screening tests, please watch my previous video. I have shared the link in the description below. Now we will discuss what are the various symptoms that can develop in colon cancer that you should be watching out for. Blood in stools. Many people have occasional bleeding while they go to the bathroom. They are shy to go to a doctor and assume it is just hemorrhoids. Don't do this mistake. Any bleeding when you go to the bathroom deserves medical attention. Changes in bowel habits. If you are suddenly dealing with persistent constipation or loose motion, or a pattern alternating with these two, then pay attention. A feeling of incomplete emptying, the feeling that you need to go to the bathroom again, even after using it. Unexplained weight loss. If you notice that you're losing weight without any particular reason, without changing diet or exercise, it may not be a good thing. Persistent pain, cramps, or discomfort in your tummy that lasts for many days. Unusual tiredness. All of a sudden, if you feel tired and exhausted all the time, it could be due to a low hemoglobin caused by slow bleeding from the tumor. 
A word of caution is that it is not mandatory for all the patients with colon cancer to develop these symptoms. Generally, these symptoms happen when the cancer becomes of a significant size. Early colon cancer particularly may be silent and that is why it is important to get colonoscopy screening done. And now we will discuss the various treatment options. The treatment options are based on the stage of the disease. That means how advanced the colorectal cancer is. Colon cancer has four stages, one, two, three, and four. In stage one, the cancer is confined to the colon. This is an early stage and in most cases, it can be cured with the surgery alone. In stage two, the cancer has gone deeper into the layers of the colon, but has not spread anywhere else. Surgery is still the main treatment and some patients may need chemotherapy after surgery. In stage three, the cancer has spread to nearby lymph nodes. The initial treatment would be surgery to remove the disease in the colon and the lymph nodes. These patients would receive chemotherapy to destroy the remaining cancer cells and to reduce the chance of cancer coming back. In stage 4, the cancer has spread to other organs like the liver or lungs or bones. These patients are treated with a mix of chemotherapy, targeted therapy or immunotherapy. In most cases, surgery may not be possible but can be used in selected cases. From this, you would have understood the earlier the cancer the more treatable it is, which again tells us why screening and paying attention to the body's signals are so important. Let us summarize the key points. Colorectal cancer is increasing in young adults and early detection is the key to preventing it. An unhealthy diet, obesity, smoking, alcohol and family history increase the risk, but lifestyle changes can lower it. Symptoms like blood in stool, bowel habit changes, weight loss and persistent tiredness should not be ignored. Screening, especially colonoscopy, helps detect and remove polyps before they turn cancerous. Treatment of colorectal cancer depends on the stage with early stage cancer being highly curable through surgery while advanced cases may need chemotherapy or targeted therapy. And that brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please share it with your family and friends. If you're new here, please check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel. We will meet again next week with another interesting topic. Until then, take care.